here we go Lux Iterna for Barky right here we go so these are the systems uh, there's five of each but you select one at random for each one so the combinations between what's good when it's made operational and what's bad when it's uh, collapsed there can be different combinations amongst the different systems which makes it interesting just a couple of design things it doesn't need the sort of the human and the computer bit on there at all now because it's just a solo there was a two player sort of attempt it didn't work very well so we don't need anything on there that sort of just restricts it to being those two just take those out for the nav cards everything starts off with a value of two if it goes below one it's collapsed and the bad thing happens if it goes above six it's operational and the good thing happens if four systems collapse you lose automatically otherwise you're trying to get points and, and stay alive till the end of the deck so there's a large deck uh, and not all of it's used in the game uh, the idea is that you will have some of them out some of them will be removed so you don't have all the cards you'd expect in any given game so they might have been removed there are bad effects that put more cards in because as long as you've got a deck the game is still running so you've got a fixed time and the fit the deck size to get through before you finished if you can survive till the end so you haven't collapsed everything then you get to score if you run out of time or everything collapses before you run out of cards then you lose or if you fall into the black hole which is what this thing is here so here you choose for an easy game you can start near the beginning why won't this bloody focus um, there are numbers on here and I can choose to start say here which gives me extra 11 points at the end of the game if I manage to get to scoring because I've started further along the track okay so I'll start it there on 11 the main bit of the game though of course is your console this is where you are each round you will draw four cards and I've drawn four cards here and you allocate one of them to be the event one of them to be the action one of them to be the black hole, which is labelled monolith on this prototype version. And then you have one that goes into your cache. The cache allows you to take an extra card through to the next round. So next round I would have four cards from the deck, plus this to choose actions from. Now so obviously some bad abilities will kill your cache, which means you can't carry things through. But if you've got a nice card you want to use later in the game, stick it down in the cache. So what I've done here is I've allocated the cards now at the moment they've all got twos and ones on the damage so which is this bit of the card here this is the bit that you allocate so I'm going to put this one here um, in fact I won't put that one there because that's quite good I'm going to put that one there so it does one damage I'm matching up that icon on the card to the event space on the console I'm going to use this card here as the action so I'm just using it for the top and then I'm going to use that because that's moving the monolith just the one space there I think no zero space is even better I'm going to stick that one there in there so once I've allocated my four cards this one won't be anything to do this round firstly one damage to navigation so I take the navigation die and I decrement it like that it hasn't gone below once so I'm okay the action is now resolved this is flip a dice to its opposite side and you can't flip a one to a six so I can't make my nav very close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up something like, uh, let's have a look at the abilities, because it's actually quite important to read what these do at the start. I'm going to do this one, put it onto five, because it lets me put one dice onto four and another onto three. So that's quite a nice one if I make it operational. Finally, the black hole movement is zero. So that stays where it is. So these three cards now get removed. The cash one stays, they go out of the game. And I'll get four new cards this round. And so I take a look at this. Um, I can swap two dice around. This look at the damage. They're all one. So I don't want to damage nav again because that will kill it. So I'm going to damage engineering instead. Um, I'm quite like the idea of moving the away from the black hole. And I'll move do monolith movement of one. And then this one I am going to not keep into. I'm going to leave this one where it is in the cache and just discard that one out of the game. So, one damage to engineering, which is up here. Goes down to one. There it is. And then I can move the monolith or move the black hole back three. So I'm one, two, three. I still keep note of the 11 I started there. So I get plus 11 at the end of the game if I survive. I don't worry about this bit. And then it moves forward one as a consequence of me getting sucked back into the black hole. And then those three go away. 
and I get four more cards. Now, of course, I'm playing this to a time, 15 minutes if you're easy peasy, 10 minutes if you're an absolute masochist. Um, so I'm trying to think about stuff as quickly as possible. Uh, and hopefully, if I can make something operational, if I make it operational, for instance, if this one was now live, I would put it here over here to say it's operational. It would be worth four points at the end of the game. And I can change the dice, one onto four, one onto three. Come on, the dice have got seven on each, total on each side. Right, there we go. If something had died, it, rather than becoming operational, then that one says put a dice on two and one on one. So you can see how the different things conspire. So, Lux Turner. I hope that helps. Cheers, Barkey.